This is a 360 degree video, meaning that you can change your view by panning the video on your smartphone or laptop. Hello everybody, this is Brandon from Clark Planetarium with a look at some simple outdoor astronomy tips for September 2020. We're going to be doing something a bit different this time. Our system's default viewing location is Salt Lake City, where the Clark Planetarium is located. Of course, in real life, the middle of a city isn't the best place to view the sky, so we're going to be taking a trip south. Here we go! I'm going to touch down in Cathedral Valley which is inside Capitol Reef National Park in southern Utah. There are many places throughout Utah that can offer clear sky viewing, but Capitol Reef is amongst the best, so why not? And here we are. Of course, the next step will be to wait until after sunset. 10 p.m. or so should be plenty late around this time of year. Yeah, quite nice. Got a beautiful view of the Milky Way going across the sky and can see many more stars than we'd be able to see in the light of a city. Well, now that we're ready to start our stargazing in this time of year, a good place to start would be the Summer Triangle. Uh, we covered this asterism in a previous Dome from Home video, so if you want to know more about these stars or the constellations in this area of the sky, I'd invite you to go back and check out that video. Farther down, Closer to the southern horizon, we see two very bright points of light. Neither one of those is a star, but they are planets of the solar system. The one on the right, if I enlarge it I can show you, is Jupiter. And the one on the left is Saturn. So too easy to find planets out right now. Now let's keep going. If we travel east along the horizon, we'll get to kind of lonely looking star. There's not a lot of bright stuff in this section of the sky away from the band of the Milky Way, and Fomalot, this star right here, really stands out. The Fomalot system is pretty interesting. The star itself is fairly young. You can see here in some Hubble Space Telescope imagery that it's orbited by a massive debris field, leftovers from the star's formation. In 2008, scientists announced that they had confirmed the existence of a young planet amongst the material, which at the time had been recognized as the first directly imaged planet in orbit around another star. More recently, some doubt has been cast as to whether or not this object, which is officially named Dagon, is truly a planet or perhaps something else, such as a loose collection of leftover rubble from the impact of two large asteroids. It's the subject of debate to this day. I'm going to keep going east and stop at this star right here. This dim little guy might not seem remarkable, but that's kind of the point. Its name is Tau Ceti, and it's a G-class star, just like our sun. It's a little bit less massive and slightly more orange, but it's way more like the sun than any other star in our neighborhood. Tau Ceti is 12 light years away which of course is super far because everything beyond our solar system is super far, but it might as well be right next door compared to most of the other stars that we can see. So just think about that. If you were born on a planet orbiting Tau Ceti, the sun would be just a dim little point amongst a sea of much brighter neighbors. Not really remarkable at all. If we go farther east and a bit more above the horizon, we'll find a much brighter object. Now it's much brighter because it's way closer. We found another of the solar system's planets. And if I make it big, it's Mars. Uh, Mars is in the eastern evening sky these days, but will gradually appear higher as the weeks advance. Directly above Mars, higher in the sky, we can see four bright stars that form a nearly perfect square. This is the great square of Pegasus which serves as the bulk of the constellation Pegasus's body. A kind of interesting note about this constellation is that technically, one of the stars in the square doesn't even belong to Pegasus. If I add the lines of the constellation of Andromeda, we can see that the square's leftmost star is also the tip of Andromeda's head. 
The star's traditional name is Alpha Rats, and for a long time astronomers considered it to be part of Pegasus and Andromeda. Nowadays, this kind of stellar joint custody isn't allowed, and Alpha Rats' official Bayer designation is Alpha Andromedae, in other words, the brightest star of the constellation of Andromeda. But you'll still see it included in basically every depiction of Pegasus you come across. I'm going to finish by showing you how to find a special object inside of Andromeda. This thing has the designation of Messier 31, or M31, and is visible to the unaided eye in good conditions like we have here at Capitol Reef. It's easiest to find if we start with the constellation of Andromeda's mother, Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is a bit more north and looks like a big W, which is meant to represent a queen sitting on a throne. If we use the rightmost V to point a line back down into the constellation of Andromeda, we can find a little smudge right here. That's M31. Now, if you can find that thing in real life, then congratulations, you've set a record for yourself. You'll never find anything farther away without a telescope. M31 is so far away, it's not even inside our galaxy. It's its own galaxy, and it's around two and a half million light years away. The other name which you might know M31 by is the Andromeda Galaxy. Within the local group, which is the collection of nearby galaxies in which we find ourselves, two galaxies dominate the pack. They are Andromeda and the Milky Way. So, however you want to think about it, as maybe our sibling or our rival, one thing is for sure, we'll get to know Andromeda better in the future. It's on a collision course with the Milky Way, approaching at about 70 miles per second. But at two and a half million light years away, it won't arrive for about four and a half billion years. So maybe we can relax a little for now. Until then, I hope you have the chance to check out our night skies in a place like Capitol Reef. If you want to learn more about the night sky or just get some awesome astronomy lessons, be sure to check out Clark Planetarium's YouTube channel and Facebook page. And happy sky watching!